This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. So when we deploy NanoServer to a physical machine, there are a couple different ways we can go about it. The first way is going to be to dual boot a nano server using a VHDX or a VHD file. So when we do this, we're actually going to install an operating system, normally a, a more full-blown operating system, onto the server itself. So like Windows Server 2016 standard. And then we're going to copy that VHD or VHDX file that we create with that new dash nano server image commandlet. We're going to copy that to that uh, operating system that we installed, like again Windows Server 2016, we'll put it somewhere maybe on the C drive and then we'll create an entry in the bootloader that will allow us to boot to that VHD or VHDX file. So in effect we'll actually have two operating systems on that particular server. We'll be able to boot to either the full-blown like Windows Server 2016 standard or the nano server image. So that's one way that's probably going to be more for a test environment. Another way to deploy it is to pixie boot a physical server and install Nano from uh, Windows Deployment Services, WDS, using a VHD, VHDX file, or WIM file. WIM is a, a Windows image file. So with Deployment Services, it's going to uh, boot up. It's called pixie boot. Contact the Deployment Services server and then get the appropriate image that it should have and apply that to its disks. So that's another option. Uh, the other option which we're probably going to use uh, more often unless we're deploying a lot of these nano servers to physical machines uh, is going to be boot a physical machine into WinPE and deploy nano using a WIM file. That's that Windows image file. So when we do this we're most likely going to boot using a, a USB key into Windows PE which is Windows pre-installation environment that is used a lot of times to actually install operating systems. But as of the making of this movie, we kind of need to create uh, this USB key that has Windows PE on it, WinPE, and our nano server image that we want to deploy. So it's probably a little bit more complex than you'd think it'd be. Part of the reason for that, though, is remember our nano server image has to be a completely customized to what we're using this physical server for. We don't want anything extra. Otherwise, it'd be more of a full-blown installation like a Windows Server Standard uh, with the GUI or Server Core. But nonetheless, I would imagine in the future they'll make a, a pretty easy-to-use tool to create a GUI and apply your, your WIM file that you create using the new nano server image. But we're going to see how to do it as of right now in the next couple of movies. Now let's deploy Nano Server to a physical machine and actually uh, run Hyper-V on it. So it'll be a Hyper-V host. So I'm going to use that show dash command minus name new Nano Server image so we can take a look at the different options. I've gone ahead and filled them in. The particular ones that are important to deliver are deploying Nano to a physical machine. Deployment type is going to be host. If we scroll down here, our target path, it's going to end in a .wim file because we're actually going to deploy this uh, using a USB key so we can install this Windows image directly to the hardware as opposed to doing some of those other options that we talked about earlier. I've got the computer name. I'm calling this Nano HV08 for Hyper-V08. I'm going to go ahead and uh, join it to a domain, enable my remote management point uh, port, given an uh, Ethernet adapter, an IP address so it's on the network, and I'm checking the box to add the OEM drivers. If I found out that I need to add more drivers, then I would want to use the driver's path option down here. For example, if my storage controller driver on this server wasn't uh, part of the OEM drivers, I would need to add that driver so that it could see the disks in order to install the operating system. So now I could click on copy here and paste it in. And you can see I just right click to paste it in. It built my commandlet and I'll go ahead and hit enter. You can see the minus OEM drivers. I'll specify my what the local administrator password is going to be. And again, it's just going to create the file for us and put it in the location that we specified. Okay, it's complete and we can take a look at it. Let's go to our C drive, nano, nano HG08, and there's our .wim file. 
Next we need to create a bootable USB key that has Windows PE on it. So there are a couple different ways we can do this and actually the Windows Server 2016 installation uh, DVD has Win WinPE on it. That's what allows us to boot up and if we wanted to we could try to recover Windows and use some tools like a command prompt and other tools in order to recover Windows using that DVD and that's actually the piece of it that we're going to use. Now another way to make a bootable WinPE USB key is to use like Windows uh, Deployment Toolkit. That will allow you to make one and then we're going to copy our uh, nano server image that we created, the WIM file, over to that USB key and again we're going to use WinPE to install that Windows image. So I'm actually going to use this Windows USB DVD download tool in order to use my Windows Server 2016 DVD to create a WinPE bootable uh, USB key. So I can click on the link here to go to the download page. I'm going to scroll over here and click on it to download it. I've actually already done that. Download it to my desktop. I'll double click on it to launch the installer. Let's go ahead and click next and install. It does require uh, the .NET Framework 2.0 in order to install it. So if you don't have that installed you'll need to go ahead and do that. So I'll just double click on it to launch it. Click yes. So now let's browse to our ISO file that is our Windows Server 2016 DVD. So if I go to my C drive here I've got it in a folder called ISO and Windows Server 2016. There it is. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And we're going to select USB device. And you notice it says Windows 7 or Windows XP. Uh, that's okay. This is actually a great tool that works for pretty much any uh, ISO image. So I'll go ahead and select my USB key, which is my E drive. I've got it inserted into this computer and begin copying. Let's me know it's going to erase all the files that are on there. That's okay. You have selected, it'll erase all the contents. Just makes me want to uh, make sure I'm sure with doing that. Okay, and it was created successfully. It took about eh, 10 or 15 minutes. So next, I want to copy that .wim file from my nano server over to this USB drive. So I've copied that over to my C drive, put it in ISO. Here it is. I'm just going to copy the folder. And again, if we drill in, this is our .wim file that I copied over to this computer. So let's go back to our E drive, and I'm just going to copy it into the root. Great, now our USB key is ready. So I've gone ahead and inserted the USB key into my server, booted it up, and now we need to boot to that USB key. So if we don't already have an operating system on the disks within the server, then it'll just find the USB key and boot to it. If we do already have uh, an operating system on the disks, then we'll just want to make sure the USB drive key is above the uh, disks in the boot order or sometimes we have the option here to like press F11 as you can see and that will allow me to go in and select the boot order uh, just for this particular boot up. So every server is going to be a bit different with the keys we press to change the boot order but the bottom line is that's what we need to do is make it boot to the USB key. So I'm going to go ahead and press number three here. This is going to do a one-time boot to the USB drive key. And it's going to go ahead and load the files from the USB key. Okay, and I'll go ahead and click Next here. And we're actually going to click on Repair Your Computer because we just want to get to a command prompt. And we're going to use the disk part utility as we'll see. So I'm going to click on Troubleshoot and Command Prompt. So I'm going to type in Disk Part, hit Enter. And if I wanted to, I could type in list disks, or excuse me, list disk. And I can see I've got three disks in here, disk 0, 1, 2, and 3. I can see the size of them. And disk 2 is actually my USB key. I can also do a list volume and take a look at all the volumes on this particular uh, computer here. And I can see actually my G drive, you can see removable. I can see the size of it. This is actually my USB key. So my G drive is something I want to make a note of. So we're actually going to install Nano Server to disk 
zero. And if you didn't have an operating system previously on there, you probably wouldn't have all these volumes. Uh, you can see I actually had uh, VMware ESXi on here, and these are all the different partitions that uh, that was made up. So I need to actually get rid of this, get rid of these partitions, because I'm installing Nano on this server now. So I'm going to type in select disk zero. And I could type in detail disk if I wanted to see exactly which uh, drives or which volumes were on this particular disk, because I'm going to get rid of all of these. So I'm going to just type in clean. And it's going to clean disk zero. It's important. No, it's going to erase all the information on the disk. Now these next commands we're going to run are actually going to uh, differ depending on the type of firmware your server has. If you have a UEFI uh, firmware, then you're going to run want to run the commands listed here uh, in Notepad. If you have a BIOS, then you're going to want to run want to run the commands that we're going to run right now. So it all depends. So I'm BIOS on this particular server. So I'm going to type in create partition primary size equals 500. Then I'm going to type in format space quick fs equals ntfs so ntfs file system and label equals system. Okay, that completed successfully. Then we're going to want to type in assign letter equals s and then activate. Or oh, excuse me, active. So those were the commands that were different if uh, we're using BIOS versus UEFI. So instead of that set of commands there, if we're using UF EFI, you use the commands that were shown in Notepad. The rest of this is going to be the same either way. Now I'm going to type in create partition primary and format quick FS file system equals NFS, NTFS label equals nano and assign letter equals C. It's going to be our C drive. At this point, if we want, we can list volume. And there it is. We got our S drive. The H drive is our DVD ROM here. C drive is going to be our nano server. And our G drive is our USB key. So let's go ahead and exit out of disk part. So next, we're actually going to use the DISM tool and apply the image. So our Windows image that we created of our nano server. You can see I'm using the slash apply file colon, and this is the path to it. So the G drive was my USB key, and I copied it to the nano HV08 folder, and it's nano HV08.wim. And I could browse to it if I wanted in this command prompt just to make sure, but I know that's the path. Slash index colon one, we can actually have multiple uh, image versions kind of in a WIM file, and this is the first one, it's the only one. Slash apply dirt, and we're going to apply it to our C drive. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And next we're going to want to copy the boot files with the bcd boot.exe tool. C colon backslash windows slash s and s colon. And now we can go ahead and remove the USB key and reboot. And we can use the wpeutil.exe space reboot to reboot. And it's rebooting. And there it is. That's it. So we've successfully installed Nano to a physical server.